Welcome back to the channel. This video is all about creating npm scripts to automate your frequently used Hugo commands so you can save time and get through your workflow faster. For this video tutorial, we need the latest version of Hugo, Node.js and Visual Studio Code set up and running. If you need any help with that, there's a link above to my Hugo installation video. After completing this tutorial, you'll be able to use npm init and you'll also be able to write npm scripts for frequently used Hugo commands, including the development server, Hugo build, rendering to disk, draft and future builds, and adding options to each of these build commands. Before we start, a quick message from this video's sponsor. As a Skillshare teacher, I've partnered up with them to offer you a free one month trial using my link below. I personally produce full-length Hugo courses on Skillshare on a variety of topics and there are many other great teachers on Skillshare ready to help you level up your skills for your next big project. Click on the link below for the one month free trial. You can cancel at any time and you'll be helping out this channel. I've left a link below in the description section and it's for the code that you'll need to start with this tutorial. You're welcome to use your own Hugo project but your, the easiest way is to click on the link for this GitHub repository. There's a the code button and then you can download the zip file. Once you've opened that zip file up in Visual Studio Code, you'll be ready to go. Once you've got those files open in Visual Studio Code, the first thing you have to do is run a new terminal. And we're going to use a command called npm init. And what that does is it, it creates a package.json file. It will ask a bunch of questions. Some of them are relevant, some of them aren't. The first one is the package name, and I think that's quite important that you get that correct. It gives you a default based on the name of the folder that your project exists in. Now, version, normally you might start off at, say, 0.0.1, for example. That's all to do with semantic versioning. You, will, you can place a description of your project in here, although it isn't that important, as you won't be publishing to the NPM registry. Entry point doesn't really matter, because we're not creating a package which will be consumed by node.js. Test command doesn't matter, we're going to be replacing that in a moment. It does help to put the correct repository in there. If you've already run git init, it will pull the repository path for you automatically. And keywords, again, they don't really matter because we're not going to be publishing to the npm registry. Author doesn't hurt to put your own details in there. And license more than welcome to look up the different types of licenses and choose the correct one, especially if you're going to be publishing online. Then you've got to confirm with enter. You can then open up your package.json file. And we're going to get rid of a few lines. So I'm going to get rid of main, not required. We'll get back to scripts in a moment. If you like, you can leave the bugs the repository in the home page, especially if it's a public repository. But if it's just for your own personal use, you can get rid of most of these fields. The main one you need is just the name, just to remind yourself, and the scripts. It's important to note, because this is a JSON file, you can't have a comma after the last entry. You'll notice after the home page entry, there's no comma. If I was to delete, for example, all of those lines, I'd have to remove the comma after the script's entry, otherwise it's not going to work. It won't be valid JSON. So let's go ahead now and let's have a look at how scripts work. So where it says test, we'll change that to dev, and then in the script itself, we're going to set it up to run the Hugo development server. So I'll start off by putting in Hugo, and you will have to have Hugo installed globally, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So there are a bunch of options which you can use. First thing we're going to do is server for Hugo server, and then we're going to add some options to it. So the best way to find that out, you can go online to Hugo Docs, but the easiest way is if you open your terminal and you run Hugo server dash dash help, it'll actually tell you all of the available commands. First ones that we're trying to add the options is dash dash gc and what that does is it enables some cleanup tasks after you've actually run the command so it gets rid of all the unnecessary files and the other one is dash dash disable fast render and that option will make sure that every time you click on a link on your site you get a full re-render and you won't have any stale content 
So the easiest way to do it is just to Control C or Command C, and then put a space in after server, and add your options. Next thing we'll do, we'll put a comma in, and we'll, next command will be dev preview. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to be able to build pages which are either in a draft state or have a date in the future. You could separate them, but I think it's much easier to keep them together. So if you look down the bottom, we've got dash capital D and dash capital F. And the long version is build drafts or build future. And that's exactly what they do. Pages which are marked as draft or pages which are marked as with a date in the future. The way we can do that is we can actually add on to existing npm commands. So the way we do it is we run npm run dev. And what that does is it actually runs the script we just wrote. Then we use dash dash to be able to add options to it. And then we're going to add build drafts. So you need a second dash dash before build drafts. And then build future. Now you could have used capital D for build drafts and capital F for build future. But by using the full command build drafts and build future, it makes it much easier to understand what is going on when you go back and check your scripts in the future. If you're typing it by hand, you'd probably want to memorize the short version. It's much easier to put the longer version in when you don't have to type it by hand and it's a script. Next time we'll use, we'll put a comma in and then we'll write a build script. So the basics for the build script is just Hugo. But let's have a look at what the available options are. So we'll run Hugo dash dash help. We'll get all the available options for the Hugo command. And the first one we're going to look at is dash dash verbose. And what that does is it provides a complete output with everything that's happening while a build process is taking place. And that's really useful for debugging. So we'll highlight all of that and copy it. Control or Command C. Place that after Hugo. The next option I'm going to set is dash dash minify, and that won't minify CSS or JavaScript, but it will minify all of your HTML files for you. So copy minify. And then the next one we're after is dash dash GC for garbage collection and also dash dash clean destination dir and that cleans all the files in your public folder that way you don't have to worry about any stale files so you highlight that and copy it clean destination dir pop that in and also dash dash gc for garbage collection The next script we're going to set up is one that I use quite a lot, and that's render to disk. And if we check out the Hugo server options, you'll see we have an option of render to disk. What that does is it serves all the files from disk. By default, Hugo Server will be serving your files from memory, but if we render to disk at the same time, we can have a look in the public folder and we can actually see the files that are being rendered into the browser. So for example, you can check out file sizes, file names. It's really helpful. So we'll copy all of the render to disk option. Then we'll paste that in at the end of our render to disk script. We'll then go in and copy our Hugo dev script in there. But in addition to what we've currently got, we also need to clean up the public folder before we start rendering to disk so we don't have any stale files. So we'll paste that in as well. We can then provide some different options of render to disk. The first one that I use is render to disk and we're going to use preview. So to make that happen, as you probably already guessed, we'll run npm run render to disk, and I've used camel case for that, dash dash, 
And for preview, we're going to copy and paste our two options out of dev preview. And we'll paste those in. Make sure you've got the, the two lots of double dash at the beginning. This is one that you may not have thought of. Render to disk production. That's what we'll do. Copy what we've already got. We'll take out the build drafts and build future. And then we'll run dash dash minify just like in our build script because we want to mimic the actual build script but we want to be able to watch it in the browser. And then we'll have to also run dash dash environment space production. So we're going to be running a production environment which will mimic the build script. We've also got our minify in there too to match our build script. We're already cleaning the destination directory and garbage collection that's already happening in rented disk. We're basically doing a build script, but we're viewing it in the server. That is really helpful for checking out file sizes and file names and just checking production behavior. And the last one that I use, and it's just a, a quick one just to help speed things up a bit, is Hugo version. And that's just so I can check which version of Hugo I have installed. And that's really easy. We're just running Hugo space version. There is one more that I use quite a bit, but I've made a separate video on that, and that is npm check, and that's for upgrading all my npm dependencies really easily, but I do recommend you check out my video on upgrading npm dependencies, and I'll leave a link to that above. So now to run these commands, all you have to do, we can close that. If you're on Visual Studio Code and you've got one of the newer versions installed, by default you have an npm scripts window. This used to be a plugin, but now it's enabled by default and all of the scripts you've just written will appear here. For example, if you want to run the dev server, all you have to do is click on the run button next to dev, and your dev server will run, and you can control click on the link to open up in the browser. You can then hit the trash or bin button next to your dev process to kill it. Say for example, you want to run a production environment, but you want to run it in the watch it in the browser, the live reload server, just hit the play button next to render to disk production for example, and that will run for you, and then we can have a look at it in the browser with control click. So here's the site, if we view the source, you'll notice it's all been minified down into the minimal amount of lines with all the spaces and tabs removed. Also, if you have a look in the public folder, you'll see all of the files that are being served into the browser. For example, you can go to your index.html file. If you right click and reveal in File Explorer, you can then have a look at the file size of five kilobytes. There'd be not only a slight reduction on HTML files, but for larger files like CSS and JS, you can get a fair reduction in size. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comments section. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you can get weekly updates of my Hugo and all kinds of future web technology videos. And remember to hit that bell notification and like this video. See you in my next video.